Greetings from Tokyo. I just wanted to show some James Bond films that I have in my collection. Now, I don't have the Blu-rays. I haven't upgraded my James Bond film to Blu-rays yet, and I don't know why. I just never got around to it, I suppose. I also don't have the Daniel Craig films, and that's not because I dislike Dan Daniel Craig. Actually, I really like him, and I think that Casino Royale is one of his, I think that's his best film, and I think it's one of the best James Bond films. It really is fantastic, superb film. It's probably up there, maybe my, top, my, maybe my favorite Bond film, or maybe number two, number three, something like that, but it's really excellent. Um, his other films, I'm eh, I'm not so so uh, much a fan of. I don't. Uh, well, I don't. Yeah, I think Quantum of Solace is okay. Uh, Skyfall, I, I don't like it as much as other people like it. And Spectre is a bit of a disappointment to me. I really wanted to like Spectre, but I, I'm sorry, I just can't get behind it. Uh, but. I love Daniel Craig as Bond, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing the next James Bond film. In the meantime, let me just show you what I have now, um, and just talk about the Bond films as we go along. So here's the first one, Dr. No. This is, a, this is the first James Bond film, as you know. I'm not a big fan of this film, actually, and... You know, just because it's the first film doesn't mean that I should bestow upon it, you know, more merit than it's worth. And so if I think of it that way, I think it's just an okay film. I like the fact that Bond is a uh, is kind of a detective and he's trying to solve a mystery. I like that aspect of it. And I like how Bond is not this Superman, but he's just a... a just a regular secret agent, you know, one kind of a small cog in this huge machinery uh, of British intelligence. And I really like that, actually. And, um, uh, but, I mean, Ursula Andress is beautiful, but, well, I don't know if that's enough to make this a, a great film. I mean, it's a great moment, but I don't know if it makes it a great film. But anyway, Dr. No, it's, it's not bad. It's respectable. Um, this is where the quality begins with James Bond for me. From Russia with Love. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic film. Robert Shaw steals the show. He is frightening as the villain Grant. And Rosa Klebb, Lotta Lenya, wonderful. Sean Connery never looked better, in my opinion. He is so cool. Everything about him in this film, his performance, is just wonderful. The story is great, it's complex. Daniela Bianchi, as the love interest, is really, she's beautiful, but she's also, and she's also very. Um, she gives a very sensitive performance, and uh, I, there's a bit of realism about her performance, which I actually like very much. I think it's a really fine performance by Daniela, Daniela Bianchi, in fact. She feels like an amateur who's thrust in this world of, of professionals and people trying to manipulate each other, and she's the, the most innocent character. She's just doing what she thinks is her duty, and... Yeah, she's a really sympathetic character. Anyway, this film is a really great film. One of the best. From Russia with Love. Goldfinger is... Actually, I think it's not the best film. It's not bad. It's pretty good, but it's not the best. Uh, there are a lot of interesting things about the film. Um, you know, I like the whole... Uh, I like Goldfinger. I think Goldfinger is one of the best parts of this film, actually. I think the villain is really funny. I like how he... he um, yeah, I like the... Mm, yeah, the, the scene when he 
is uh, killing one of the gangsters, Mr. Solo. Mr. Solo is being driven in this Lincoln Continental car, and he's being driven, and then he's shot, and then he's killed, and then his body is left in the car. And then rather than um, take care of taking the body out of the car, or doing, you know, burying it, he goes, the, the odd job takes the car to a junkyard and has the car crushed into this little, like, metal cube. And he takes the cube and he returns it back to Goldfinger. It's amazing. And, oh yeah, and, and in the back of the car, in the trunk of the car, there's all this gold. So he has this dead body in the car with gold in the trunk, and he has the car crushed into this metal cube, and he returns it to Goldfinger. And then Goldfinger says, you know, I have to figure out how to remove the gold from the car. Like, what? It's amazing. I love that scene. That's a really funny scene. And, oh, yes, but my favorite part of this film is not Goldfinger. My favorite part is the little old lady who has the machine gun. I love that. Really funny. And a Goldfinger. Next, Thunderball. Um, not my favorite. It's not bad, but it's not my favorite film. Um, I think it's a little bit long. I think it's a little bit unfocused. But... It's not terrible. The underwater fight sequences are a little bit, eh, you know, after a while, I mean, a little bit is fine, but after a while you feel, okay, let's just get on with it. Um, but uh, there's some uh, good moments in this. Um, I think my favorite part of this film is Luciana Paluzzi as uh, the villain. Or one of the villains, actually. She's really, really ruthless and beautiful and just, um, yeah, yeah. She's probably the best part of this film, actually, Luciana Poluzzi. Anyway, Thunderbolt. You Only Live Twice. This is the one where Bond is in Japan. Um, it's not bad. I, I, I like it. I don't love it. Um, I think Sean Connery looks a little bit maybe tired. I don't know if he's really into the role. Certainly not as much into the role as he looked to be in From Russia With Love, that's for sure. That being said, there are some really interesting touches here. Um, I should say also that in the film, there's the scene where he visits the Osato office building, you know, this kind of white building. And actually, I work in Tokyo. And my office is about, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 minutes away from that actual building that they used in the film. It's actually now a, a hotel. It's a really interesting building. I visited there once and I looked at it and it's the same. It's the same white building. And um, of course it doesn't say Osato, but it's, it's the, the structure is the same. Anyway, yeah. You only live twice. Next one is my favorite of the Bond films, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. This is the best one for me, I think, bar none. Great, great, great film. George Lazenby sucks. He's a very bad Bond actor, I think. I don't think he's very good. I'm sorry, George, but he's not good. Um, and despite that, this film is excellent. I mean, George Lazenby gives a pretty bad performance, and but that's why this film is good, because it overcomes that in such a triumphant way, which is really stunning. Telly Savalas is excellent. I love how the way he holds his cigarette. It's very interesting. Diana Rigg is probably the best part of this film. I love Diana Rigg. And the music is great by John Barry. The, the theme song is great. The stunts are great. The set pieces are great. And the story is fantastic. And really, um, uh, you know, the, the idea of like chemical warfare combined with a sort of a, um, a love story for Bond. Really touching and shocking and dramatic. Wonderful film. The best in the series on Her Majesty's Secret Service. <clears throat> Diamonds Are Forever is a film that I find myself going back and forth on. 
Sometimes I love it, sometimes I don't love it. Nowadays, I think I find myself maybe loving it a little bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Probably the best thing of this film for me is Wint and Kid. Mr. Wint and Mr. Kid. I love the... Uh, yeah, I, I love their dry humor that they use before they kill people. Yeah. Uh, live and let die. I am... Uh, it's not the best film. I love Roger Moore. He is my favorite Bond. He is wonderful. Sir Roger Moore, I love you. You will be missed. You gave me so much happiness as a kid. But, uh, I, yeah, it's it's not the best film. Um, it's not bad. I mean, the villains are okay. I mean, the racial politics are also very problematic. Uh, but I'm trying to ignore that and trying to get into it, trying to enjoy the film. And it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I guess, you see that? That's the still from the knife fight between Bond and Kananga. You know, when Kananga has a knife and he, he's trying to fight Bond and he does that little thing with the... Yeah. I don't know. I, you know, I, I don't know about that. I, I maybe, I, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to talk to the guy who, who choreographed that knife fight. Yeah. You know, ask him what he was thinking. The man with the golden gun. This is one of my favorites, actually. It's, uh, it's not considered one of the, the best films. In fact, I think it's considered to be one of the worst films in the series. But I love it, actually. I think it's a real gem. Of course, there are some problematic elements to it. Um, you know, not the least of which being uh, you know, the fight between Bond and Knickknack. You, know, you have Bond, six foot tall guy, and you have Nick Knack, you know, the little guy, and you know Nick Knack's just trying to defend himself, and you know throwing the bottles at him. But Bond has like a, you know, he has a chair or something. He's trying to beat him up, and he's trying to, you know, man, that is really, if you think about it, that's really, that's terrible. You know, Bond is a really terrible guy in this film. Uh, <laughs> but despite things like that. I think this is a really fun film. Um, Christopher Lee is probably the best part of this. And uh, oh yes, I, yeah, I love as I said I love Roger Moore. He's my favorite Bond. He always will be. But I'm so sorry to say this. You know, Roger Moore, uh yeah, his martial arts skills are uh yeah. Um but yeah. Anyway, great film, Man with a Golden Gun. Oh, and also, J.W. Pepper is in this film. Now, J.W. Pepper is this fat, racist, kind of a real uh, terrible character. But in this film, he is very lovable, and I root for him. I, I love J.W. Pepper in this film. Um... Yeah, there's that scene, you know, the scene with the car, and it does that flip, right? That famous car stunt. And J.W. Pepper, he, Bond is driving, and J.W. Pepper is in the front seat, and it does the flip, and then, like, J.W. Pepper kind of does a twirl, and does a jump or something, and he's flown through the... And he, he ends up in the back seat of the car. Now, I don't know if that's even physically possible, Right, because you know, I don't know how if his body frame could fit over the the space that's between the top of the seats and the and the ceiling. But anyway, I don't think it's worth thinking too much about. But anyway, J. W. Pepper and Man with a Golden Gun. For Your Eyes Only is a film that I'm not so fond of. Um, oh, wait a minute. I skipped one. Excuse me. So 
sorry about that. I'll go to that one later. My mistake. The Spy Who Loved Me. This is a film that I loved as a kid, but I don't like it as much. Or I, um, I should take that back. I don't watch it as much as I used to when I was younger. It's not bad. Jaws is in it. It's got an interesting 70s disco Bee Gees style score. And it's got a really neat little uh, plot. It's kind of a carbon copy of You Only Live Twice, actually. But I don't mind about that. Anyway, Spy Who Loved Me. I don't care what you say. I love this film. Moonraker. This is one of the films I, I grew up watching as a kid. When it was on TV, I just watch it over and over again. I love this film so much. Jaws. Oh, I love the character of Jaws in this film. You know, he is so angry and he is so frustrated. And, you know, he, he had only one job, right? He was a killer, but he did it so well. But you could tell that he was so angry and frustrated. And it was only after he found love right that he saw the light you know and that's a really powerful and inspiring message if you think about it and uh, you know I'm, I'm not being sarcastic I'm being really sincere actually I really love that message and I love this film Moonraker uh, Corinne Cleary is one of the the Bond girls in here she plays like Drax's assistant early on beautiful one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen uh, anyway, yes, Moonraker. Oh yes, and um, Drax had a had a henchman who was a I think he was Japanese. He was a Japanese kendo teacher in Venice, and yeah, he's credited as being called Chang, but for whatever reason, they call him Cha. Now, here's For Your Eyes Only. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this film. Um, there are parts of it I like. I mean, I like the, the moral ambiguity with respect to the villains, right? Uh, you know, early on, you don't quite know who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. And I really like that moral ambiguity. I, I like when James Bond films do that. You know, they do that a little bit in Living Daylights. They do that a lot in... Quantum of Solace, and I really like those films for, for that aspect. But other parts of the film I find a little bit, uh, a little bit dull, boring. The ski scenes I think are the best part of the film, but for me, they kind of pale in comparison to the ski scenes in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. That being said, it's not a terrible film. It's a real respectable film. I love it for what it's trying to do. But, yeah. Anyway, for your eyes only. <clears throat> I really love Octopussy. This is a scary film. It's a real... Uh, there are some pretty disturbing parts about this film, if you think about it. You know, there's that, you know, the, the guy who uses the buzzsaw to kill people. And there are the twins, the knife-throwing twins. And there's also the, the clown makeup. And, like, you know, oh, it's kind of scary, actually, for little kids to watch. But it's really fun. Uh, and Louis Jordan is, the, is great as the villain. And my favorite part is actually the henchman. I think his name, uh, his character name is Gobinda. And, you know, he's very strong and he's loyal to uh, Kamal Khan, right, the Louis Jordan character. And I love how the film introduces Gobinda's strength. You know, he's supposed to be superhuman. He's supposed to have superhuman strength. And the way we know this is early on in the casino scene, Bond is playing casino, uh, casino game with dice. And Gobinda comes in and he takes the dice and he just puts him in his hand, he just crushes the dice, and you see the, the dust fall, 
and I love it. You see James Bond, you see Roger Moore's face, close up his face through the dust, right? You remember that? Oh, I love it. And he just crushes the dice in his hand to show how strong he is. Anyway, octopus. Um, Sorry about that. There we go. A View to a Kill. This is a wonderful film. Okay, I know it's not highly regarded in the fan community. Roger Moore is very old in this, I know. You know, Tanya Roberts is not the best. Um, you know, uh, what's her name? Stacy Sutton. That's her character's name. I mean, it's not the best James Bond girl, right? I, I mean, I understand that. I. You know, she's running and the blimp comes behind her and you think you know, how can you not notice a blimp coming behind you anyway but um, you know, despite that uh, this is a great film it's Ma um, Max Zorin is played by Christopher Walken Grace Jones is Mayday and you've got a great plot um, You've got the, the whole um, Golden Gate Bridge fight. Uh, it's really kind of frightening in some places. I mean, if you're claustrophobic, those scenes with the, the car in the lake or the scenes in the mine when the flood comes in, those can be really frightening to someone, especially if you're claustrophobic. So this is a real frightening film if you think about it. Uh, yeah. Um, the Golden Gate Bridge fight, though, is, is probably the highlight for me. Fantastic film. Fantastic. The Living Daylights. This is up there as far as my favorite Bond films go. I love this film. Mariam Dabo is the... Uh, she plays uh, Kara Malovi in this film, the cello player. You know, one of the most beautiful women to appear in a Bond film, I think. I, I, th I love you, Mariam Dabo. And what's his name? Timothy Dalton, yes. Timothy Dalton plays Bond. And he's awkward in some places. You know, his line delivery seems to be a bit... Maybe he's not as comfortable in the role yet. But some parts, though, he really shines as Bond. And he's a, a fantastic Bond in a fantastic film. It's a thriller. It has moral ambiguities. You don't know who's a hero or who's a good guy, who's a bad guy. Um, you've got great villain. Um, I forget his name, but you know the guy, the the henchman with the blonde hair, and the fight on the airplane between him and Bond. Oh, what a great fight! I love that film, that fight, and the the score by John Barry. The last time John Barry would score a film for James Bond, or would score a James Bond film. One of the best scores. I love this film. Uh, yes. Living Daylights, one of the best. Fortunately, License to Kill is not one of the best, I think. I, I, I actually don't like this film. And I never, to be perfectly honest, I never understood why people expressed their love for this film as they did at least in the fan community I, I never really liked this film I, I thought it was very uh, poorly made it felt like a or it feels like a like a you know a, a made for TV movie rather than a James Bond film that being said there are some interesting parts there are some good parts to it I think some of the, the story elements are, are interesting you know how Bond is trying to uh, be you know he's befriended by Sanchez and uh, he's trying to uh, trick Sanchez and trying to get Sanchez to 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 you know um, uh, to doubt members of his crew one by one I thought that was a really interesting intriguing plot twist but Apart from that, I'm not too enamored with this film, unfortunately. Still, uh, you know, I'll give it a chance. I'll, I'll watch it, but, uh, uh, you know, maybe not soon. Now, I have a, um, I don't know, my, my 
my feelings about Pierce Brosnan are still up in the air. I don't know if I like him or I don't like him. Or, you know, I should take that back. I don't know if I like the Pierce Brosnan films yet. And the reason is, is because the films are a bit of a mixed bag for me. I like the the attempts at being serious while being playful and I like Pierce Brosnan as Bond but there are just some points that I find a little bit I don't know it's just maybe I'm I'm not of that generation you know I'm a little bit older maybe um, you know I didn't grow up watching this film so I'm not as attached to it as maybe other people are still it's a good film. GoldenEye is a good film. It's probably my favorite of the Pierce Brosnan era. Tomorrow Never Dies is not bad either. Um, I like Jonathan Price in this film. Again, it's just it feels like a mixed bag. I think it's it feels like um, Bond or the the writers or the production is trying to do too much with Bond. He's trying to make Bond into you know he's trying to give him a little bit of everything. You know, he, He's a brooding Bond, yet he's a wisecracking Bond, yet he's a, you know, suave Bond, yet he, you know, he's a, um, I don't know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know if Pierce Brosnan's performance had that much range. I think it would have been more successful if, if they tried to focus in on, let's say, the suave playboy aspect of James Bond. That might have made it more successful. But, you know, they threw in that whole subplot with, um, you know, with an old girlfriend, Paris, and he has a brooding, he's, he's, he's morose about that. I don't, I don't really like that part of this film. Um, I, I much prefer Bond, uh, Pierce Brosnan's Bond, as a playboy. Anyway, with that in mind, there's the next Pierce Brosnan film, The World Is Not Enough. In fact, I really loved the first half of this film. And I love the the stuff with Electra King. I think Electra King is one of the best characters in a James Bond film in a long time. She's very interesting as a character. My favorite part of this is Electra King as a character. But everything else with um, you know Denise Richards and um, uh, gosh, I'm I'm blanking on his name. Uh, what's his name? Yes, Robert Carlyle as the villain. Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not so, I'm not so fond of that. You know, like Robert Carlyle as the villain, you know, they're fighting, he and Bond are fighting in the s nuclear submarine that's, that's, you know, that's, that's um, tilted, or that's, uh, you know, that that's kind of um, vertical. So that should be an interesting set piece, right? But, yeah, like, and he's got to put them, um, he's got to put the rods, right, into the core in order to um, uh, detonate the bomb. But, you know, like I understood that because he always puts, like, uh, is it me or he puts the rods in so slowly and then you cut to Bond and then you cut back to him and he's still putting the rod in, right? And you cut back to Bond and he's still putting the rod in. It's like, you know, he he doesn't progress. He's just, you know, every edit takes him back and takes him back. I never understood that. Maybe it's just me, but... Um, that always bothered me as a kid when I watched this film. And I really don't like his, him as a character. But I like Electra King. She is the best part of this film. <clears throat> Last is Die Another Day. And... Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Yeah, um, Toby Stevens is really good in this film. Uh, he plays the, the bad guy. And it's not his fault, what I'm about to say, but I really don't like the way that this film treats the villain. You know, the villain is an Asian guy, and they turn him into a white guy. Now, I don't know about... You know, the, I don't know what the situation in like Hollywood is as far as like whitewashing, um, you know, all that stuff. But this is probably the the worst offender of that kind of whitewashing. I, I don't know. I, I found that to be really offensive, actually. Um, 
but despite that, uh, it's not bad. I don't know. It's not a bad film, I suppose. I, there's some interesting parts. Uh, the 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 ice hotel. I don't know. I, I yeah. Well, actually, I should take that back. I, I I mean, I'm sure it's a really nice thing to do as a tourist, but just for me personally, I don't see the appeal of staying in an ice hotel. Um, I don't mind the invisible car thing as much. Actually, I think that was a little. That's really interesting. Actually, the invisible car. Um, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I I apologize. I don't mean to to speak like this. Actually, yeah. I take that back. I don't like this film. I don't like the invisible car. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. Die another day. Uh, that's it. Thank you.